Oh no, had a bit of a layer shift up here. That's not good. I had that layer shift problem during the most critical part of my 3D printed guitar. To see my solution, just go to. Otherwise, keep watching to see how it got there. So this is really important and one of the um, longest prints and, and definitely the most um, critical print that I'll do. Yeah, it's nice and black, nice and black and sparkly. So that should be uh, should be pretty pretty cool. All right, new filaments loaded, and now I can um, I can actually start sorry printing through the uh, online service through what is that called Prusa Connect, I believe. So yeah, I can do that and get it all set up, and hopefully I can get this uh, the base part of this guitar going. And yeah, sh should be awesome. This, this printer's been uh, you know it's by far the most expensive printer I've ever had, but it's also Seems to work the best too, so what do you know? You get what you pay for. Open up, there's a slicer. And I think if you put it on the side right here, I should be able to print it without supports, supposedly. So it's, supposedly the core one will do is 75 degree overhangs. And I think, I don't think that's 75 degrees, but we'll see how it turns out. All right, so uh, after brief interlude, I did get this all the way all the way on here, and added some supports right here, and yeah, so it should uh, should print. This is probably the biggest print I've ever done. This is using, let's see, 223.72 meters of filament or 667 667.27 grams of filament or 867.27, including spool. I don't exactly know what that means but it's gonna be able to get this done in 10 hours. So I think that's that's pretty awesome. So so anyway, I'll, uh, I'll send this to, to my printer through the, um, the Prusa 1, Prusa 1? Prusa Connect interface. So I've got my file uploaded to Prusa Connect and in theory it's starting now, I guess it's heating up um, remaining time, nine hours and 30 minutes. So slightly faster than I thought. So yeah, hopefully this will be, uh, be nice. Well, I'm really we're doing kind of a trial by fire thing here. I mean, this uh, this print, this uh, black black base, I guess they called it. I don't I don't remember black. Anyway, the, the base of this takes up the majority of a uh, roll of one kilogram filament. So, or one kilogram roll of filament. So, so yeah, that's that's really quite a lot. I think it's one kilogram. I, I don't really know. Um, anyway, it's it's a big job. But it seems like the Prusa Core 1 is just kind of doing its thing and I'm not too worried about it. So that's awesome. The print's looking quite good and I guess the cool thing is I'm actually looking through uh, their glass here. So it's, um, yeah, even the glass is nicely, isn't good quality. Again, you know, sometimes I guess, I guess that's the difference between a, you know, $1,400 printer, 15, depending on what you get on it and something that you get for you know, two, three hundred dollars. I mean, it's totally functional. I, I used it for, for many years and, or several years at least, and it's been a workhorse. However, it's nice being able to just kind of turn something on and get it to work. All right, I think it's just about two hours of print time right now. Maybe a little less, but uh, yeah, it's looking pretty good. So it's a little out of after eight o'clock now and the print's been going for almost six hours. And one thing I was a little bit concerned about is this uh, edge here where it meets up with the, um, with the sports. Seems to be doing, seem to be fine right there. So I'm pretty confident this print will be okay given, given how things have gone. And I mean, six hours for this, compared to my old printer, that's, that's really fantastic. Yep, starting to look like the base of a guitar or the, what do they call it, black box, black, Black mass, not uh, black mass. It's not right. Anyway, the black thing. Um, I don't know why I can't remember the name. So it is the next morning, and on the 3D printer, my thing is done. So that looks pretty awesome. Put it up. Ooh, uh oh, oh no, I had a bit of a layer shift up here. So that's not, that's not good. But either way, that's a lot of filament that uh, I've wasted. So let's see, pull it off. Oh, support's pulled off nicely. You know, maybe I should have tried something a little less challenging for my first print. But yeah, bottom looks good, sides look good. These don't, these don't look great. 
but I guess it's it's quite the overhang. It's pretty near, so yeah, maybe I needed to put a better some better supports on there. Tops looks great if it wasn't for for this bit, but unfortunately, I don't think this is usable. At least not, at least not fully. So yeah, this this uh, this hole shifted over. So all right, back to the drawing board, I guess. All right, prints all done, and well, layer is definitely shifted. This time a little bit up. That's uh, that's not good. Looks like it's shifted in two directions. So I'm wondering, you know, this is not like the most solid base in the world. So maybe, you know, maybe I need to put it in a more solid base and see what happens. I guess I'll give that a try. Since this was uh, a little unsteady, I, I went ahead and put it on this uh, workbench that I have here. I don't, I don't necessarily want to have this on here permanently, but you know, you can see it's very solid. And I also put it on this uh, slab of tile. So yeah, there shouldn't be much vibration with this. And I'm hoping that'll have an effect. So I'm gonna go ahead and print another one of these. You know, being a good scientist for once, I'm gonna go ahead and change one variable at a time. So I've changed the, changed the uh, place and I'll see you see what happens. I'd like to put some supports on this, but you know, again, I just want to change one thing at a time for now. So we'll see what happens. It does seem like it failed a little bit higher up this time. So I don't know, uh, to me, that's, that, that indicates some sort of hardware problem, not necessarily a software problem. So, or maybe, maybe software too, who knows? But, you know, if it's shaking around, shaking around, you know, I could see why that, that might, might be a problem. Well, the vibration seems to be down significantly. There's still a little bit on the top, but I mean, compared to what I was doing before, vibration's a lot better than it was. So, you know, you might say it's a, uh, you know, no vibration's good, I don't think, in this case, but, um, you know, before it was a very bad vibration, unlike the Marky Mark song, which was a good vibration, or so they say. It's interesting how many 90s rappers became you know, fairly serious actors before, like, you know, Will Smith, uh, Marky Mark. I guess those are the only ones, but, you know, fill in the blank. All right, so this print's almost done on the more uh, more steady surface, and uh, what do you know, it looks looks a whole lot better. I still, um, you know, I was printing this on the fast uh, preset, on the preset slicer, so I may actually print the next one on structural. I, I guess that should, should help a little bit. Just have a little bit of... Uh, Something or other over there. So I have to check that out when it gets done. Well, no, no layer shifting as far as I can tell. Although, that's a little bit there and needs some support. So I will, um, I will try this again, do another test print. And after that, I'll do, a, do the full thing and hopefully it'll look pretty good. So this is my second try at doing the whole thing again. It's been running since, uh, I guess, late yesterday afternoon, early yesterday evening. It's now, I don't know, somewhere around 10 o'clock in the morning and still going. The one thing I'm concerned about is this little gap right here. Hopefully that won't be a problem, but maybe I should have printed it with some sort of brim or some sort of, sur some sort of surface like that. We'll see. So that doesn't necessarily bode well, but I think, I think it's just with any printer, even one of the best printers in the world, probably, you know, you've still got to work with it. You still got to learn it. You got to learn the ins and outs of stuff like this. So it's very good, but it's not magic. I guess, I guess you might say either way. I, I think this print's going to, going to go through, but if it doesn't, I'll be uh, rather frustrated. That'll be almost a day down the tubes and quite a bit of filament too, but I am optimistic. I am printing this a little bit more slowly. It's on the, I think, structural sh structural setting rather than the quick setting that I think was maybe the default. So, you know, even though this took, uh, was much faster yesterday or the other day, it uh, should be printing better now. Really, the surface looks fantastic. So, probably worth printing this slowly if you have the time. All right, so this print should be done. I'm gonna walk out there. I'll record my reaction, I guess, because could be bad, but hopefully it'll be good. We'll see. So, looks good. Yep, no shifting as far as I can see. So we'll take this out here. That's uh, 
Oh, not, not much shifting. I got a little line here, but it seems to, I don't know if that shifted through the whole thing or not. Anyway, um, besides that, it looks really good. I mean, you got the base, base there that I talked about earlier. Yep, looks good. That's gonna be a solid, uh, solid piece of guitar. So let's see if I can pop some of this stuff off. Oh, yeah, not too bad. Looks a lot better with the supports. Still a little bit of, um, I don't know, imperfection there, I guess, but that's not too bad considering. All right, so I got some work to do, clean this up. There's a bit of a line here. I don't know if there's a layer shift there or what. It doesn't seem to show up here, so I don't, I don't know, maybe it's just a little bit of extra material. Should be acceptable, hopefully. So I've got the guitar right here, the Harley Benton guitar. Uh, this, I guess we'll get rid of, although that might look pretty good on my laser cutter if I put some cool patterns on it. Um, so we'll set that aside for now. And then the big thing is, I guess, if, I guess we need to see if the neck's gonna fit on here. Hmm, a little tight, but should fit. Yeah, that's a tight, that's a tight fit, but looks like things align correctly. So I don't quite know what this is for, this hole, but do it first and then go back and read the directions, right? It's not what you're supposed to do. Also thought I'd put the um, wire the potentiometers, but looks to me like that actually goes in a place that I haven't printed yet. So um, yeah, I guess I just have to get, get the printing done. So that is um, working on that right now. That's a different part, but definitely necessary. Oh, yeah.